there, everybody. It's your old pal, VR Boomer here. And today I'm coming at you with a project video and I am super excited about this. This is for all you PC flight sim folks out there. I'm going to show you how to turn an old joystick into a set of rudder pedals. This is going to next level your flight sim gaming and it is so much fun to do. Uh, now, I can't take credit for the idea itself. I did find the idea on a forum post. Uh, I'll link to it below if I can remember, but this design is my design. I didn't use the one that that person used. A couple things I kept in mind for this design. First of all, I wanted to keep it inexpensive. Uh, if it's going to cost me $120 to build my own flight pedals, I may as well just buy a set of flight pedals. So including the cost of picking one of these up. Now, I happen to have this kicking around in the sellers where I didn't spend any money on it. I looked online, like Facebook Marketplace, eBay, they're around 20 to 30 bucks. You can probably find one for a little bit less. But even including that, I think this whole project is going to come in under 60 bucks. So if you happen to have a flight stick already that you're not using, and it has to be one with the, the twist joystick, like most of them these days have, um, then you're looking at like 30 bucks to do this, as long as you have some tools. So let's go over the, oh, the other thing I wanted to do for this is I'm keeping it simple. Uh, I initially started thinking about doing like a pendulum style one, but that was going to be complicated. It was going to be expensive. There's a lot of engineering challenges involved. I want to make this as simple as possible. So if you've got just basic building skills, being able to use a saw and a screwdriver or a drill, you should be able to do this. So let's go over the equipment you need. First thing you're going to need is a saw. I happen to have a circular saw. There's nothing about this that you can't use a handsaw for. It would take you a little bit longer, but you certainly can get it done that way. Or, of course, if you own a table saw, that's the way to go. You're going to need a drill. Uh, I have this cordless one that I'm going to be using. You don't have to. You can use a corded one. You're going to need a set of drill bits and some screwdriver bits for the drill. You need some measuring devices. Measuring tape. Having a square is good to make sure you're getting your lines right. And you're going to need a long straight edge, about two feet which is what this one is. Uh, probably going to need a screwdriver. You're definitely maybe going to need a screwdriver. You're going to need some wrenches. Uh, a couple adjustable wrenches will work. I happen to have the sizes that I know that I'm going to need. You're going to need a really heavy-duty set of pliers like these with a cutting edge in them, or a good strong set of pliers and something to cut heavy gauge wire. We're going to be working with like coat hanger wire, um, so you're going to have to be able to cut through that. And of course, Eye protection. Built safe. All right, let's get on to the supplies that you're going to need. All right, before we move on to the rest of the supplies, one of the things I forgot to mention is you're going to need some kind of adhesive. You can use uh, like a gel cyanoacrylate or two-part epoxy. You need something that's going to bond to wood and metal and plastic. And I'm just going to use hot glue for this. Um, it doesn't need to be a super strong bond. This is quick and easy and pretty clean, so we're going to use this. All right, so what are you going to need for supplies? First of all, obviously, you need an old joystick. Again, as I mentioned, what's really important is this Z-twist axis is working. If the X and Y axes are messed up, don't worry about it. We're not going to be using those at all. Um, even if some of the switches aren't working quite right, you might still be able to use those for the brake pedal switches, but just to do the rudder pedals, all you need is that Z-axis. You're going to want a 2x2 two two sheet of either plywood or MDF, medium density fiberboard. I'm going with birch plywood here. I think it's going to be a little more solid, a little more durable, a little more long-lasting. Um, this was like 13 bucks at my local hardware store. All my pricing, I should mention, is American. It's where I live, it's what I do, but I can't imagine this would be wildly more expensive in other places. You're going to need some risers to separate the top and the bottom part. I grabbed some short little uh, PVC extensions. You don't have to get this. These were like 50 cents each or something like that. They're not expensive, but you don't need these. You can actually, there'll be scrap wood you can use to stack up to make a riser out of. So I'm using these because they're going to be nice and convenient, but they're not necessary. Couple of coat hangers, the wire kind. We need the wire from the coat hanger. You're gonna need a lag bolt. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. With some nylon washers and a lock nut. That's gonna be our axle point. 
You're going to need six or eight um, long machine screws with washers. I wasn't exactly sure how long I was going to need them, so I got two and a half and three inches. Um, the diameter doesn't matter at all. And you're going to need like eight or ten wood screws. Um, grab a box at Walmart or whatever. They're not expensive. And that is actually all of the supplies you're going to need to do the base fill. Now you'll need a few other things to wire up the switches for the brakes, which I will show you in the next video, but this is all you need for this part of the build. So let's get building. Now the first thing you want to do is mark up your wood for cutting. And I'm going to include a link below to some brief plans about this for all the pieces you need to cut out, but it's not going to have any dimensions on it because that's going to vary a little bit depending on your needs and the size of your controller. You want to leave about half an inch to an inch all the way around the perimeter of the controller for your top piece. So I went with 11 inches, which for me is going to be a good size for that. As you can see we've got a top piece, a bottom piece, some feet, and the cross member. Now one of the tricks with woodworking is when you mark off your areas, put X's on the scrap areas. These are the areas that you're not going to use. These are the areas that you are going to use. Mark the pieces so you know which is which. And then the top and the bottom, I've just arbitrarily chosen that as forward. It's going to matter a little bit exactly which way I lay this out. It's not a big deal. Uh, now it's time to saw. Once your cuts are done, the next step is to find the center point of your bottom board. This is super easy. Just get your nice long straight edge, you go corner to corner and make a big X. There's our center point. There is a fair amount of wiggle room in this. You don't have to be super precise. Do your best. But if you're off a little bit, it's not going to be a big deal. So why we wanted this center point is it's time to drill a hole for our lag bolt. You want to find a drill bit that's large enough that the bolt can move in and out fairly easily, but not so large that it's going to wobble around. You want it held. Um, in this case, for the bolt that I have, I used a quarter inch drill bit. Again, it doesn't really matter what size you use, as long as the drill bit works for what size of your bolt is. All right, all the way through. As you're going to see, we're going to kind of work from the bottom up with this project. The next step is to install the feet. Now there's two ways we could do this. We could install them like this, or we could install them like this, assuming this is the front. I don't think it really much matters. I was going to say I'm going to install them this way, so it'll give a little bit of extra stability, but this hangs over like half an inch on each side. So I don't think that's going to make a big difference. So we're going to install them this way. Uh, we're going to go on the bottom of the bottom. Get it right about the center. And now you need your wood screws. See what we got in the old screw bin here. Again, just buying like an assortment from Walmart will be fine. doesn't have to be super precise. I'm just going to dig through here till I find four that are about the same size and look like they're right about the same thickness. Um, to stop the wood from splitting, I think we're going to be smart and run some pilot holes. So again, you want to find a drill bit that's a little bit thinner than the screws themselves are. So the teeth will be able to, to bite, the threads will be able to bite. Go with that size. All 
Another useful thing, I didn't mention this in the tools section, having some clamps can make your work a lot easier. It's that way we can clamp these in place before we do any drilling. So we can line that up how we want it. Again, this is not a super precision operation. I'm not the world's greatest carpenter, trust me on that. Everything I build is a little bit crooked one way or another. And I don't mean that in the political sense. All right, now we don't want to go all the way through. Just want to go down in a little bit. I'm just kind of going for the feel on this, but if you want, what you can do is you can hold your drill bit, figure how far down you want it, and put a little mark on it with tape, or even a Sharpie, which I happen to have right here. So let's say we want to go, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. So let's say we want to go about halfway through this bottom piece. That's right about to here. Put the Sharpie on the drill bit. Now we can gauge how far down we're going. Oh, look at that. I hit that one almost perfectly. All right, let's do this one now. Okie dokes. Now, if I was just doing this, I would put four clamps on and keep it suspended on the clamps, but that, if I do that, it's going to put the whole thing out of camera view. And that would be kind of counterproductive. I don't feel like moving the camera right now. Hope you can see this. Drive it in nice and tight. Uh, most drills, you can adjust the torque down a little bit. So you're not hitting it too hard. You want to go deep, just deep enough that the top of the screw is flush with the wood. I want to go with a little bit more torque than that. Go with a little bit more torque. I want to drive that in just a little bit more. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna do the other side, and this time I am gonna go up high because now that I've shown you one, I don't need to show you the other. Now that we've got the hole drilled for the lag bolt, we're gonna make the holes for our risers before we do anything else. Now, the way these are gonna work, is these are gonna be sitting right about there, just inside of the feet, like that, like that, and we're gonna run some bolts all the way through to clamp them together to hold them in place. The exact positioning of the holes here, again, isn't critical. You just want to make sure they're, they're inside between these feet, so you're not running through the feet. The whole point of the feet is to keep this base up so the bolt heads aren't impacting the floor. Now again, these are our machine screws. I don't know if I'm going to use the two and a half or the three, but they are the same size screw, just different lengths. These are number tens that I have. So we've got to pick a good drill bit for these. Um, again, we want it to slide in and out easily. Yes, make the, all the jokes you want in the comments. That's fine. It's a little snug. Yeah, that looks good. So we're going to go with 11 sixteenths here. The reason I'm doing it this way, just stacking one right on top of the other like this, this way I can just run the holes right through and they'll be lined up. So I want to make sure these are as lined up as we can get them. 
Again, the exact positioning of the screw holes isn't important. What is important is that they're lined up top to bottom. And that, if we assume this is going to be right here, we go in the middle, run right through. All right, now that we've got the hole drilled for the lag, we need to install our cross member. So we're gonna have to put another hole in this, just like that one. Again, right to left center, in between center, as close as you can get. This wood is a little splintery. If you want, you can sand it down, smooth it down. That's all part of the finishing. We're just gonna go over the basic build right now. How to put the pieces together. All right, so I happen to have a metal washer here. We're gonna start underneath. The bolt will come up from underneath. If I can get it in there. Oh, look at that, perfect. The nylon washers are gonna go in between here. This is gonna give a little bit of friction resistance. It's gonna let it slide a little bit. Wood on wood doesn't always slide so well. That's why we're using the nylon. You could use Teflon just to give it a little bit of a slip, a little bit of a bearing. All right, now we're gonna come on the back here, get on the back with our adjustable. Of course, if you have sockets, you can use sockets for this too. And we're gonna crank down this lock nut. A little bit tighter than that. This is a little awkward. There we go. Nope. have to grab the ratchet in a moment. That would make this a little easier. Still where you can see it. There we go. All right, tighten it down. Now, that's a little too tight. So if my adjustable wrench will stop falling off, we're gonna back this off just a little bit. That's pretty good. Maybe even come a little bit looser. There, now it moves pretty freely with almost no effort. That's what we want. All right, after your cross piece is in place, the next step is you want to temporarily put the spacers in. So now it's time to mount the joystick to the top piece. Now you're only doing this temporarily because you want to fix the location of the joystick first before you permanently, well, before you finish screwing them together. You want it right and left, as centered as you can make it. And then the trick is you want the center of the joystick to be as close as you can over the center of this cross piece, which doesn't necessarily mean the joystick is gonna be centered on this plaque here. Because if I center this here, the joystick is like an inch too high up. So it's gonna be back this way. You could, in theory, do it either way. You could center this and then figure out the hole for this. I think it's probably a better bet to find the center on this first and then adjust the joystick up and down as needed. To me, that feels like the easier way to do it. Now, you want a measuring implement. As I said, you want to try and get right and left to be about the same. pretty good. So we grab the Sharpie. Make sure it's square. Square as we can make it. 
What we're going to do is we're just going to do a little bit of an outline. So now we know where the joystick is going to go. All right, now we're going to separate these. Now I'm lucky in this one that I've got just this empty plastic space on each side that I can drill into. All the guts of the joystick are in the middle here. You may not have that luxury. I think most joysticks have at least some amount of free plastic that you can just go and drill through. If not, you could always use epoxy to bond it to that. Or um, like this is galvanized wire that's used for or metal banding that's used for HVAC stuff. You could strap it down that way. If you want to adjust it afterwards, it's not a bad way to do it. I am going to permanently mount, well, semi-permanently mount mine though. Now, I, on the, I, I've prototyped this once already. So I've already got some little holes in here that I drilled up through from underneath. So what I'm going to do now is drill down through that way. And then I'll have holes underneath that I can run wood screws up through. Made it easier. There we go. Place these ones, yeah, these ones are through too. All right. I mean, we actually could just go with two. You don't really need four. That's going to be plenty secure there. But, you know, I'm a little bit nutty. So we're going to go with four. One more shorty here. Shorty, but not too thicky. All right. That is well attached. And I grab another two and a half back here. Three. These are all in place. I'm just going to get nuts on the back. All right. We're in the home stretch, my friends. All that remains now is to attach this to this. So when you move these, this does its thing. Actually, there's two other things that we need to install some stops. We'll get on with that in just a minute. All right, now it's time to connect the cross piece to the joystick handle. The big thing here, the really tricky part, is you want to make sure that this stays as parallel to this as you possibly can. Fortunately, this seems to be pretty square along the line here. Again, you've got a little bit of wiggle room. And it is always possible to recalibrate your joystick to center it. This is going to be the tricky part. So, this is where we need the coat hanger bits. The first thing you want to do is cut a piece off the coat hanger. I'm going to shorten that end a little bit. That's where having something like this comes in really handy. So, one end is going to go in here, 
and we're going to drill a hole in the joystick and slot the other end in there. Now what we want to do is go from the back side of this wood towards the front side of the joystick. And that's going to give us the most directional torque without flexing the rod this way. I might even do two sets. I haven't decided yet. So let's start by drilling a hole for this. Again, I got a drill bit now. You're going to want to make sure there's enough room for your foot to rest on there. So I think we're going to come. come up pretty far in so that's what we're going to do and still have clearance we'll call it right there I'm going clean through with that one you know this is going to be long enough I can start without that bend in there Now, I didn't do this on my prototype. I had another way of attaching these, but I think this is going to be better. So, I haven't actually done this yet. We're doing it together. All right. That's snugging down into that hole nicely. It's going to bend right about there. So I'll put a good bend in that. Now this is going to twist around. Let's let's pick a hole right there. Let's say that's where we're going to. Now I've already cracked this open, so I know there's no electronics in there for me to run my drill into. That's going to be all right. Let's try it. So that's where we want that bend to be. Right there. We also want to make sure that these aren't torquing the handle. Let's pop this out of there. How's that whole feel? That works well. There's our mark right there. You want to cut it off close to that. And we want to get the angle of the bend as close as we can. So from here, we're going to bend that way. It's going to be too long. Let me cut some of this out. See how it goes. I was stuck getting these white coated coat hangers. I was hoping to just to get the plain metal ones. Yeah, just one of those is not going to be enough. I think maybe one on each side might get it done. Or I might have to do an X pattern. I had that in mind too. You know, I had also kind of thought to maybe come more forward with this. So I want to 
wonder if we can still manage that. So what if we pop a hole right there, right where that bend is. Now, I'm going to change the angle of the bend so it goes more that way. That's going to be tricky. I need another pair of pliers for this, which I do have floating around here somewhere. have to torque it that way a little bit. So let's see if we can manage this. That's not going to work. See, the problem is getting a grip on this to twist that. I might have to untwist it and retwist it. Whoops. Oh, no, it's just the plastic that's slipping off the metal. That's all. thought I had broken it. That's going to be in there. We want this to twist kind of that way. Let's see if we can get that into that opening. You know, this plastic cover is getting in the way. Where's my knife? Well, that's a lot thinner without the plastic on it. Maybe I should have just cut the plastic off in the first place. I didn't realize it would come off that easily. Hmm. That is not putting much torque on there. Let's try doing that. Doing one on this side. Fortunately, I have plenty of coat hangers to mess around with. So let's try leading up front on this one. I might just, let's just do this. See how tough it is to just pre-strip this wire. Not tough at all. Oh, there you know. This stuff strips off very easily. So, uh, if the only coat hangers you can get are white ones. Strip them down first. That makes it a whole lot easier to work with. It also makes the holes I'm making too big. Oh, you know what? I wonder if we could come lower down with this. I wonder if that would work. Let's try it. Oh, but you know what? I can't go through there because that's where that is. So we're going to have to go high. Let's just go high and in the back. Square this up. I'm going to pin that 
one right around there. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of a twist out of it. Yeah, I'm going to strip this wire off and then I'm going to step down to a smaller drill bit. torquing the rods. So what say you? My original thought had been to use crisscross. So let's crisscross. And if this fails, we can go back to the other way that I did it with the strapping, which worked. It just wasn't is elegant. Anybody want some partially used coat hangers? These trips super easy. I wish I had thought to try this in the first place. So I wanted bare wires anyway. Step down our drill size a little bit so uh, you can't see this. Get a piece of scrap wood and drill a test hole in it. You guys get to see the engineering process at work. Even be a little too thick. It's pretty close. Let's go. Let's go slightly undersized. If we go with a slightly undersized hole, you can always hog it out a little bit. Nope, that's right on the money. Perfect. So let's just do a crisscross and see what happens. So we'll do one front there. One back there. Hoping that the hot glue will provide adequate support. These things will really be bound in tight and actually pull on that joystick. All right, this one's going to bend right about here. for that one right there. Where I want it. 
it. So it gets right about there. Give that a bend, trim it off. All right, you know what? Let's get everything lined up, anchored in. Angle this one a little bit higher. And then we will put the hot glue on, and we will let the hot glue dry, and see where we're at then. Should be good to have them laying on each other a little bit like that. Let's go right up there for that one. Smelling that hot glue, baby. See, that's definitely torquing that. This is going to have to be, yeah, that's putting some torque on that rod. So this is going to have to be bent back a little bit. Like this, I think. I don't want to be torquing that much. All right, I think we might be on to something here. Let's get this squared up. Let's do the hot glue. Another good thing about the hot glue is it's fairly easy to remove if I need to. It's not as permanent as super glue or epoxy is. Hey, I think this might actually work. Another thing we could possibly do is use some wire to bind right here where the rods are crossing. It's actually probably a really good idea. Right now, we're gonna let that hot glue cool and we'll come back when it's cool. Okay, the glue has cooled and lo and behold, it's turning it. The last thing we want to do is put in stops. So I want to make sure that when I'm steering that I'm not over torquing the joystick, which is pretty easy to do. I mean, there's some flex in the rods, obviously, but I want to avoid that. So this is really easy. 
I'm just going to turn the joystick all the way here. And we're going to mark that. And we're going to do the same on this side. Turn the joystick all the way. And then mark where that is. Clumsily. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. I believe I am just going to run bolts through. Let's see, I thought I had some more of the three inchers. Those are the two fives. I thought I ended up with six of the three inchers. There's one of them. And there's the other. Now I just need to find the nut that goes on that one. This is lost in my little tray of stuff here. There we go. Now you could do, you could drive a hole and put a dowel right there. You could use this mark like under here and just glue or nail a little piece of wood in there. Um, there's a million different ways you could do this. There's a million different ways you could do most of the stuff that I'm doing here. The problem I'm running into right now is that this is right over the foot. So I think we're going to have to take a different approach like this. You know, I think that's what we'll do. We'll fire the hot glue gun up and we'll just glue those in place. This will probably be better anyway. I think it's better to have this impacting wood than metal. It won't wear out quite so quickly. All right. Well. That is the basic build done. When we come back in the next video, I am going to go over how to rig up the micro switches or some micro switches to use for individual foot brakes. We'll see you in the next video.